Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I'm doing a Skellige starter deck guide. We're going to be going through the deck, how to play it, and how to make it better for less than 400 scrap, which is totally a bargain, by the way. So if you're struggling a little bit in Gwent and you're new, don't worry, I got you covered. So here we are in the deck builder. This is the starter deck here. And before we talk about all of these cards, I do want to talk very quickly about what these symbols here at the top mean, because I know some new players get a little bit stumped by that. This here is the number of cards in your deck. So if we take out a card from the deck, it goes down to 24. If we put a card back in the deck, Geralt of Rivia goes back up to 25. You get a little tick, because 25 is the minimum number of cards in the deck. And I do not recommend going over this if you're going to build a deck, because it means that your draws will be less consistent. And because of the provision system, it means that you're getting less value per card. So what is the provision system? Provisions uh, can be seen here. And this is your remaining provisions. Now, when you build a deck, you get 150 provisions plus the number given to your ability. So in this case, Onslaught gives you 16 provisions. But if we were looking at other abilities, you could play Reckless Flurry, which gives you 15. So at the moment, we get 166 provisions to work with. Now, each card has a value in terms of its power. So if we look at Geralt, for example, he has three strength when you play him on the board and he costs 10 provisions. So if you want to put this card into your deck, it's going to take 10 provisions away from your total. This is the number of provisions remaining. So if we take Geralt out of the deck, you can see we now have 34 provisions. We put him back in the deck, goes down to 24. If we, for some reason, decide to add all of these other Geralts, uh, we now are at minus nine. So this is not a viable deck. So let's take out all of the Geralts. We also went over 25 cards, which I don't recommend. Uh, last but not least, we have this here. This is the unit count. If we take Geralt of Rivia out, it goes down to 19, put him back in, back up to 20. So those are your symbols. Now, what's going on in the deck? Well, first and foremost, you have your ability and every deck has a, an ability tied to it. In this case, we're running Onslaught. What this does is it allows us to damage an enemy unit by one and it has a cooldown of two turns. So basically, more or less every other turn, we can damage an enemy by one, which can be quite useful when you're running cards which have this uh, Bloodthirst tag. Bloodthirst uh, is based on the number of damaged enemy units required to trigger the ability. So if there are three damaged enemy opponents, when you play Svanriga Twirsek, he will boost himself by five. So he goes from being a six to being an 11. And when you're running a leader ability that lets you deal damage every other turn, it's quite easy to have those damaged units. And damaged enemy units are ones whose val strength value is lower than their base strength. So this is his base strength six. If he's damaged, then that is uh, five, for example. Uh, and it goes red. So you know if units are damaged by the color of this number. Um, red means damaged, basically. And if you're colorblind, I, I apologize. You can always check the base strength of the card. I'm not really sure how difficult that might be for you, as I can see color. Okay, so we have Geralt of Rivia in the deck. Geralt is in every starter deck. Uh, what he does is he will destroy an enemy unit with nine or more power. But occasionally your opponent's going to be playing um, a faction where they don't tend to have units of nine or more power. Obviously, we just talked about Svanriga, and he is going to be an 11 if you get the boost, which is a nice Geralt target. But sometimes they will be able to play around this. So do think about holding on to Geralt or not holding on to Geralt, depending on the deck that you are against. For example, if you're against Nilfgaard, uh, and they are not going first, which means there's no tactical advantage where you can boost the unit by five. You might have a hard time finding value with Geralt. Just think about that. Then we have Donar. Donar is a five strength unit. He does two damage, but if you have Bloodthirst two, so two damage units, he's going to deal four damage instead. Dora Gray is a lock. So we play this and we can lock a unit which disables its abilities. So for example, in this deck, we do have the Uncrate Longship. We play this on the melee row, that's the front row, back row is called the range row, and whenever our opponent plays a unit, it deals one damage to it, which is also really good for Bloodthirst, by the way. Uh, however, if this is locked, then this is not going to trigger every turn. So that's what locking does. Next up, we have Giant Vore. We play this on the melee row, and it will boost itself by one for every damaged unit. And that includes units on your side of the board. So every damaged unit, not just the ones on your opponent's side of the board, uh, which is pretty nice. And a good way to damage units on your opponent's side of the board is with Lacerate. Damages all units on a row by two. So if you're trying to get them to the point where they're lower than their base strength, that is a good option. Udoric, he is a three strength unit. And when you play him, he has the ability order damage a unit by one. So an order is an ability that's triggered manually by the player, uh, but you can't trigger on the turn that it's played. 
So if you play Udalric down on the board, then on the next turn you'll be able to trigger the order. However, if two units are damaged on your opponent's side of the board, you gain zeal. And zeal means that the order ability can be used on the same turn that you play it. So, so if you play it down and you have two damaged opponents, you can use this ability immediately. And you get three charges, so you can deal three damage uh, or one damage three times. So it's good to hit different targets in order to try and get lots of bloodthirst, for example. Or if there's one target you really want to deal three damage to, you can do that too. Okay, so next up we have Freya's Blessing. This is going to play a bronze Skellige unit from our graveyard. So we take a bronze Skellige unit out of the graveyard and put it on the board. And do whatever it says on the card, for example. Next up we have Elder Bears, which are pretty garbage in my opinion. It's just a six strength unit. It doesn't do anything. It's a neutral unit, so you can't resurrect it. And if you're looking to replace cards in the deck, Elder Bear is definitely like, I think, high priority. We have our Dimmon Light Longship. Play this on the range row, which is the back row. Uh, and then every turn, not the turn that it's played, obviously, because it's in order, but every turn, because we've got a cooldown of one, it can damage itself and an enemy unit by one. So you deal one damage to your opponent, and the boat takes one damage. Um, and then on the next turn, one damage to a different opponent, boat takes one damage. And as you damage the uh, boat, obviously, it does give you an extra damage unit for Giant Boar, but what you can do in the future is you can play the Hay May Herbalist, and you can play this on the ranged row, on the back row, heal an allied unit, and healing, uh, you only heal if the unit's current power is lower than its base, and you restore it to either base power or the amount specified. So if it was damaged only by one, you would only heal by one. If it was damaged by three, you would heal by three. Then you boost, so you put the value above base value, by three. Uh, we have a Brockvar Archer. This is going to be played on the back row, the range row, and you're going to damage an enemy unit by the number of damaged units on their side. So the more damaged units on your opponent's side, the more damage this can do. So you want to be playing this card kind of later on in the round. Or after you've played, say, something like an Udalric and damaged lots of targets. Uh, then we have Gutting Slash. Gutting Slash deals four damage. So if you have two damaged units on your opponent's side of the board, it deals six. This doesn't happen that often, because a lot of the time you're playing Gutting Slash to remove a target, and you tend to do that early. Um, so if you want to remove engines, you know, for example, like those uh, those long ships, remember I said these these are going to be dealing uh, damage to your opponent every turn. If your opponent wanted to kill those and they were playing Skellige, Gutting Slash kills it and you don't need the extra damage. So, but just being aware, aware that you have it is good. Uh, then we have the Hey May Spear Maiden. When you play her, you damage an enemy unit by two, then you damage yourself by two. So damaging yourself, it does play into the Herbalist for healing, and it does play into the Giant Boar. But this card, overall, I feel like it's a kind of mediocre card and one that you would be looking to replace. Last but not least, we do have the Dimmon Pirate Captain. Uh, and this is a three strength unit. And if you have Bloodthirst 2, we'll deal, an, uh, deal three damage to an enemy. But if you don't have Bloodthirst, it does nothing. And considering, like, we need to actually set up the Bloodthirst, sometimes this can be a dead card. So just be aware of that. And again, it's probably one of the cards that I would look to replace. But that is the deck. So let's get ourselves into a game. And I'm going to play the starter deck, show you guys a little bit about how it works, how the cards kind of work together. Uh, and if you do find this helpful, then don't forget to leave a like on the video. So here we are in the mulligan screen, and the first thing I think you guys want to do, you want to check what your opponent's playing. Our opponent is playing Nilfgaard, and they're playing Strategic Withdrawal, which means that they can take a Nilfgaard unit from the battlefield, put it in their hand, and boost it by two, and then play an additional card. In terms of the hand, we have Heime Herbalist, which does synergize quite nicely with the Dimmon, or with the Spear Maiden, although I don't think the Spear Maiden is the greatest card ever. We have Gutting Slash, which will allow us to damage a unit by four. I'm going to mulligan the Dimmon Pirate Captain. I think they're tricky to play. We've got another one. And I think I'm also going to mulligan the Heime, actually. I think some of these cards, like they don't feel like the most powerful cards in the deck, so I think they are good to mulligan. We're going first. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play the Light Longship down on the ranged row. If our opponent has an Alzo's Thunder, they will just be able to remove it. Uh, which would be a little bit unfortunate. But ultimately, given the state of the hand, we could play the Ancrate Longship and then boost it. The problem with that is that uh, this deck often has locks. So if they have a lock, they're just going to deny our ability. 
Unfortunately, because we're going first, it means that we can't use Onslaught on turn one. Uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. But we'll wait and see if our opponent has an Alza's Thunder. Turns out they don't. But what we can do here now is we do have a target for the Gutting Slash. This will damage the unit by four. Uh, and we can use that to kill this, which I think is worth doing. Because the Nausicaa Sergeant, whenever they play a deploy, it's going to be boosting. So it's one of these cards that we call an engine. Cards that gain value over turns. Similarly, the Ancrate Longship is an engine. So let's play our Gutting Slash here and just kill that. We don't really need the Bloodthirst effect from it because, you know, four damage is pretty much okay. So let's end our turn. And once again, didn't have a target for the Leader ability, which is a little bit sad because we can't really set up those Bloodthirsts. Okay, so they have another Nausicaa Sergeant, but we have another Gutting Slash. And the thing about this faction is they're not going to play too many units that we do necessarily want to kill. One of the units that they will play potentially is the Alba Pikeman that goes on the melee row and it will damage any unit that is on my melee row. But at the moment we don't have any units on the melee row so that's not too much of a problem for us. So let's just damage that again. <laughs> End our turn and once again not use our leader ability but that's okay. Okay so our opponents played Imperial Brigades. When they play one of these it's going to summon the copy of it from its deck. And I think now what we're going to do is we're going to play that long ship and we're going to put that boost on it. We're then going to use the light long ship to damage one of these, like so. I'm going to use our leader ability to damage the other one, like so. And what that does is it does give us this bloodthirst tag. If our opponent has a lock, I would imagine we'll see it get played now. They don't think that they have an Elza's Thunder because I feel like they would have killed the long ship if they did. So in that case... Maybe they have a lock. We'll have to wait and see. So we can play Udalric because we currently have Bloodthirst 2. There's two units on the opponent's side of the board which are damaged. That means that they've got this red health, right? Well, now there's only one, but we could create another one with the log ship. And also, this slave infantry uh, is damaged by the Ancrate long ship. So our, our ability is kind of playing into one another here which is pretty nice. And actually, I think what I want to do here is I'm going to just play the Svanriga, which is going to probably give us the round because this is going to boost by five. It's quite good. But it does mean if our opponent has Geralt of Rivia, it gives them a target. However, that does mean on the uh, final round, if we play Giant Boar and the Giant Boar goes to above nine, it's not going to be too much of a problem for us. So let's just do this. There we go. And we'll have to wait and see if our opponent has uh, Geralt. And no, they don't. So that's quite nice for us. We're going to take our pass as well. However, because we were going first, we only have five cards in our hand, whereas our opponent has six. We will draw one, two, three cards. And now we have eight. So I don't think we want double Heimei Herbalist, especially with only one Dim and Light Longship. Um, and I will say Elder Bear is not the greatest card ever. But what I'm actually going to do is mulligan the Dim and Pirate Captain. And we got Geralt. Geralt's a little bit tricky to play against Nilfgaard. We, however, do have eight cards in hand. And if we have eight cards in hand, then what we want to do is we want to be on seven so that on the next turn we draw three. If we had eight cards and we passed now, we would draw two cards. We would get an extra mulligan for the Gorn card that we didn't draw. But in general, I think it's better to draw cards rather than to have better or have more mulligans. So I think what we are going to do here is we are going to play... I mean, we might not even see value out of Geralt in this matchup, to be honest with you, because Nilfgaard doesn't go particularly tall. So this might seem very, very strange, but I'm going to play Geralt of Rivia here. Because I don't think we're going to get a target for it, and because I don't think we're going to get a target for it, it's in our best interest to play the card now, because it's kind of a dead card. Our opponents played a pikeman. We are going to just pass now, so we've gotten down to seven cards. Our opponent could choose to play another card here if there was something in their hand they didn't want to run, but they've actually chosen to hold on to them, which is, you know, fair enough. And we've drawn a Dimmon, another Herbalist, and a Heime. And I'm going to mulligan... I think I'm going to mulligan the Herbalist. Another bear. Oh, I do not like Elder Bears. It's just six points. It's not amazing, you know? And we'll also mulligan the Heime. Got a Brockvar Archer. Could be, could be very good. Could be very good. We would have liked to see Donna gives us another uh, some more damage, and we would have liked to see probably the longship or a resurrect so that we could get the longship out of our graveyard. But 
unfortunately for us, did not draw the greatest that we could... You know, I feel like we could have drawn a little bit better. Our opponents played enough Guardian Knight for seven. When they play this, it boosts an enemy unit by two. But because there are no enemy units, obviously, because we've got no units on our side of the board, it doesn't do so much. But what we can do is give that a little ping so that it's damaged. Pop down our longship on the range row. Although it may get locked. I feel like it's quite likely to see it get locked here. Uh, and then chill and see what happens. Last rate, I think, is going to be really good value in this matchup, honestly. Because what uh, last rate's going to do is it's going to damage a lot of their units, which is going to give us good value on some of our other cards. Okay, so they've decided that I'm not going to target anything, which is objectively true. I have zero intentions of targeting anything. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to ping the armor pikeman, and we're just going to play a bear. The problem we have is if we... Um, if we do only play on the macro, we're also playing into Lacerate. So what we could do is we could play Dora Gray and lock this. And I don't hate that as a strategy. So I think what I will do here, if I'm honest with you, is just play the lock. Um, so we, if we damage now, we don't damage for one turn. We do damage for one turn. We don't damage. We do damage. We don't damage. We do damage. We don't damage. So we can actually afford to just wait with this damage. Um until they play more units, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Our opponent can use their leader ability on the Alba Pikeman, but that's not really something that they want to do, because if they use their leader ability on the Alba Pikeman, then what they will end up doing is they remove the boost. It will remove the boost and the lock, so they'll just have a four strength Pikeman, which I don't think is a very good use of your leader ability. No okay, so they used Serret there and used her to damage uh, our unit by four, which means that they do have orcs in their hand, which is a lock. Could be a little bit uh, orcs would, shall we say. We can deal three damage with the Dim and Pirate Captain here. But I actually think what we want to do... Ooh, it's not going to be enough, is it? Here we get three more damage. Damage unit by one. But we, need, we really need four damage. I think what we'll do is we're going to just damage this by one. Although they may play their leader and pick it up, uh, which will heal it, and then play another bear. I think if they don't use their leader ability now, we will try and kill Serret. Because if we kill Serret, it stops their leader ability from being redeployed. And if we can do that, I think that's very good for us. Okay, and they haven't done it. So this is, this is, although, mm, we only have, we only have three damage here, actually. We wouldn't have enough. Yeah, so they, they've decided to pick the card up. They may play it again. We'll see. Swears. Okay, so they played Swears, which abducts a unit from our side of the board. But this row is getting pretty stacked for Lacerate, uh, which all in all I think is a good thing. So I guess now what we will do... I just need to be careful I don't kill everything, you know? Uh, maybe we play the, the Udoric now? I think I'm going to play the Udoric and just deal three damage here to the Pikeman. Not bad. We have, like I said, we have Lacerate. So I'm trying to get it so that if I play Lacerate and deal two damage to all the units on the row, it doesn't kill them. So at the moment, I don't want to actually be pinging these units at all. We do have a couple uh, damage units though, so we could play the Dimmon Pirate Captain. But again, I need him to give me targets to damage, right? And ideally, I need those targets to be worth more than three points. A, so there is one. So that's nice. So now what we'll do, we'll play our pirate captain. And we'll damage this unit here. Gives us another damaged unit, which is really good for us. And it does mean that we can also currently deal three damage with the Brockfar. This has a base strength of four. So we can get to the point where we can deal four damage. We can actually lock the pikeman. And I do want to play on the front row because this is locked. So maybe I've probably played enough units on the on the back row here. Did I forget to use my leader ability? I may have forgotten to use my leader ability. This is the risk with abilities like Onslaught is occasionally you're going to forget to use them. Which is not really ideal. Okay, so that has actually given us a target here for the Herbalist. Which is pretty nice. So I'm just going to take that opportunity. There we go. Booster back up. We are down quite a few points. So 22 to 31. 
He currently has three damaged units. Uh, we can get, let me see, four, five, six, which is going to give us six point, ten points on the giant boar, which is not terrible. We've also got eight points on the lacerate. Also not terrible. Okay, so there's orcs. Uh, so let's use our leader ability here to damage orcs by one. Then we'll play our Brockfart Archer, which unfortunately also has to go on the range row. Uh, and damage the... Did we just damage the Serret? I guess we did damage Serret. There we go, getting more damage units. So now we have five damage units at the moment. Which is pretty good. Oof. I don't know. There's Elza Thunder. Okay, so... I mean, if they have Lacerate, they have Lacerate, right? We're gonna Lacerate now the front row. And now they have seven damage units. We're on 22 to 23. What's your last card? Treason. Okay, so they made a unit damage its adjacents by two. Which you should play around, because you do know that that is a card in the starter deck. But I think, ultimately, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, let's just damage this. Our giant boar should give us the game. And we were quite fortunate because we had a long round. We got good value from Lacerate. Even though the hand wasn't ideal, we managed to damage enough of our opponent's units that we could get really good value on the boar. And because we had the last say, you know, even if they did have Geralt, uh, although we saw it, I believe, in round one, it wouldn't have been an issue. So, I tell a lie we didn't see it in round one, did we? We played mine in round two. Anyway, anyway, this whole game has just gone, <laughs> it's just out the window. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the deck builder and I'm going to make a few changes to this deck. I'm going to show you the changes and uh, we're going to get into another game to show you guys the improved starter list. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are back in the deck builder and you may have noticed we haven't made too many changes to the deck here, but we have put in three cards that work very nicely together. Now, the first card we put in is the Spile Blood Priest. This is a pretty highly regarded bronze Skellige card. And what it does is every allied turn, on turn end, it will damage the unit to its right by one, and then it will boost itself by two. So damage to the right by one, boost self by two. So you're dealing one damage to your own unit, but you're gaining two value. So it's a net gain of plus one. And you might be saying to me, Jagras, why would I want to damage my own units? Well, in Skellige, there's some units that benefit from being damaged. So we've also added a couple of Twirsec veterans. And, and what these do is you play them and they damage themselves by three. So they go down to five. But they have this ability, Berserk 2. And what happens with Berserk is when this unit gets to two strength or lower, it will heal itself all the way back up to eight. So you play this on the board, go next to the priest. The priest starts chipping away its health, and then when it gets to two, it's going to heal straight back up. And the thing is, if your opponent damages this, but doesn't kill it and puts it down to two, it's going to heal straight back up. So it's an interesting card. If they can't remove it in one go, it's quite hard to deal with. Uh, and the third card we put into this deck is the Heimei Protector. Whenever an adjacent unit takes damage, boost self by one. So it, let's say we plop this down next to the veteran on the right hand side. So we've got priest veteran protector every time that uh, priest damages the veteran by one it's going to boost the protector by one and also you can play this card next to things like the dim and light longship the, the boat that damages itself because then whenever the boat damages itself it will be boosting the protector and all three of these obviously you can resurrect with freya's blessing so you can try and recreate that little kind of engine combo again um, also damaging your own units if you don't you know, have a veteran to damage. It does give you more value from your Hey May Herbalist. So I think it's pretty powerful. Um, the only thing I would say is maybe in this deck, it's slightly trickier to get those Bloodthirst, but because of your leader ability onslaught, I don't think it's too bad. And overall, I do think this is an improvement to the list. So without further ado, let's jump into another game. Let's play this improved list and I'll showcase these new cards in action for you. All right, so we are up against the monsters. We have two Twirsec veterans. Uh, we have one Svalblad priest. I think what we're going to do mulligan-wise is maybe get rid of the herbalist. We'll see. Our opponent is playing Carapace. This boosts an allied unit by three and gives it a shield. 
um, which is a little bit problem for our damage strategy. But I think if we have our little engines here going, then we should be okay. Let's mulligan the herbalists. We've got Udalric, and let's mulligan the archer. We got another boat. And I'm also going to mulligan, I think, one veteran, because we only have one priest. Okay, so we're going first, and I think the first thing we want to do here is just play our longship down. We could boost it if they have an Alzas, but I think, you know what, if they have an Alzas, they have an Alzas, right? We have a second one, and at some point they're going to have to zap something. So if they have a zap now, then I guess they have a zap now. They don't have a zap now, that's great. And they, they did have a zap. Oh well, that's a little bit unfortunate. But what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? I'm gonna play another boat. We don't have a resurrect, unfortunately. Uh, doesn't mean we can't play our leader ability once again, but you know, that if they don't put units on the board, then it does make us, uh, our, sorry, our uh, attempt a little bit sad. But never mind. The only thing is if we also play the Alzheimer's Thunder, or the Alzheimer's Thunder, the tactical advantage, we're going to be playing into our opponent's ability. Um, but what we could do here, which is quite nice, is we could use the priest to damage this by one, and then uh, play the veteran. So if we play the priest, we'll pop that down next to the boat here. That's going to deal one damage to the boat uh, when we end our turn, and he's going to boost by two. But by doing this, it means that on the next turn we can play the tactical advantage onto the boat, and that is good for us. And it, Monsters doesn't have a lot of ways to deal damage, so I kind of feel okay with putting this down to a three. Um, all things considered, doesn't seem like too bad of a play. Okay, and that's good for us. It hit the it hit this priest rather than the longship, and that is definitely something that we want to see. I'm going to play our veteran now here on the board next to this. He's going to damage himself down to five. But bear in mind, when he gets down to two, he's going to heal back up to eight. So let's uh, play our T8 here. The only problem with playing veterans is it does play into things like Ghoul. Our opponent can... Not Ghoul, sorry. Osral, our opponent can play, which can consume units from our graveyard. Ghoul only consumes from his graveyard. But... Oh, I, f I keep forgetting to use my Onslaught. <laughs> Worst leader ability ever. Silly Jaggers. Whoopsie daisy. But we do have a nice little engine on the go here. So they played the harpy, they ate the egg. They got another harpy on the board. Um, I think this is fine for us. I don't want to use my lock just yet. We can use it on death wish units, but I'm not necessarily tempted to do that. Uh, if we have Bloodthirst 3, we can play Svanriga. We don't have Bloodthirst 3. If we have Bloodthirst 2, we can play Udalric. Which is fine. So let's get Bloodthirst 2. Boop. There we go. Let's play Ulrich on the back row. And let's deal some damage to the Harpy. Boop. Jobs a good un. And on the next turn, this is going to damage the Twitchsec and heal. So this is probably, if our opponent doesn't pass, where we want to pass. We are currently on 21 points and they're on 8. We're going to get plus 2, making that a 9. Plus the heal of five yeah so they opted to pass so you'll see here as i pass this will damage this this will heal up and then this guy will get boosted like so so there we go and going against monsters we don't mind a long round monsters they want to set up their graveyard and our opponent hasn't really managed to do that we have a resurrect so we can get another priest we have a, a veteran which is quite nice though we, we could play one card this round uh, in order to um we could play one card this round in order to uh, draw into three again on the next turn. In which case, I don't know how useful Boar is going to be. Or we could mulligan, right? Let's just mulligan. Maybe let's just mulligan the Lacerate for now. And I'm going to stick with that. Because what I can do here is I can just play the Heime. The Go down to seven cards. And it means that when we draw cards, we're maybe likely to see some Protectors. We could see another Priest. We could see another Resurrect. All of which are very useful for us. Okay, so we're going to take our pass here. And we do have last say, so keeping Geralt in this matchup is good. It means our opponent, if they do play, you know, consume a big target, then we have removal for it. Although sometimes they don't. He does have a 9 strength unit, though, that just exists as part of the deck. So worth being aware of. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mulligan the, the Brockvar Archer, because he's quite tricky to play. And the other Brockvar Archer. 
And lucky us, we did get another priest. Although unlucky us, we didn't get a protector, so we can't make the little trio. But all in all, it's still not a worst case scenario, right? So I think what I, I probably want to do here is just play the longship as a kind of stalling tactic. And then we'll use the leader on one of the Neckers in order to deny a little bit of value. Just means if they do have an Elza Slender, you're kind of giving it a turn to kind of bait it out. Uh, and then what we'll do next is we will play our, there we go, our veteran and our priest. So let's play this. We don't have any ways of dealing one damage easily now. So let's play this. The problem we have here is I think we're going to have a hard time getting our bloodthirst to trigger, unfortunately, which is a little bit upsetting. Um, but there's not a huge amount that we can do here. Let's play this. We'll kill the one that's by itself because the back row is getting a little bit stacked. Um, which we can always last right later on, depending on what our opponent chooses to do. And the issue is at the moment, Giant Boar really isn't a very good card to play. So maybe when we resurrect, we should just resurrect the longship. Like, so we have the resurrect. I mean, can get a second priest on the board. But I feel like having an extra priest isn't necessarily going to help us. So I think instead, let's play this. And let's just get the, the, yeah, the, the long ship, right? So that then when he plays a card, it gets damaged, because that's going to play into our strategy a little bit. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is this could get uh, Geralted, and then we maybe should have waited to see if that happens and then rezzed another one. Okay, so there's Alpha Werewolf. So this is actually kind of good for us, because we can get um, a second point of damage on the board with the Harpy Egg, and that's going to allow us to deal damage with Donar. So, if we play our, our leader here, like so, and then we play Donar and Hinder, we can then deal four damage, we can kill one of these Neckers, deny them some Thrive value, and you'll notice this will ping this, this goes down to two, goes up to eight, and we, we do have a nine though, which is a little bit, a little bit scary. And I think maybe we, we look to lock the egg on our next turn, if our opponent doesn't consume the egg here. I think the correct play is just to lock it. And there's Spear Tip. And that does... Oh, it doesn't give us Geralt value because of the boat! That's frustrating. Alright, let's lock the egg. I do not there we go. On I don't think they're going to play anything else we really want to lock. You know, the other Death Wish unit this deck runs is Arcaspore. Oh, so you can see, playing around, playing around the uh, injured units, but unfortunately, playing into the, uh, playing into the Geralt. And what we can do here, we can ping this Wild Hunt Rider, get our third. We've actually managed to get our, uh, uh, damage quite nice and the thing is he had to boost this because he needed dominance in order to thin these but by doing that it's given us lots of nice targets and the boat has really helped us so now we can play this and get a plus five which is you know, pretty good i'm gonna say that is pretty good so we do see the ice giant coming out there and honestly i feel like this isn't a bad time to play the giant boar We've got one, two, three, four, five damage units. So if we play the boar, then we're going to see plus five. There you go. Um, and that gives us a chance to do that just before, you know, anything starts getting consumed. I don't think we're going to get that many more damage units just because the last rate is going to kill the egg, damage the giant that's already damaged, and then put this to three when it's a thrive. So you're losing a target and gaining a target. So what are you going to eat? There we go. Not bad. So let's play our Lacerate. Does not hit the Spear Tip, but that doesn't matter because we are going to kill him with our leader. Uh, let's ping the Osral. I don't really need necessarily coal units, but you'll notice now my, my 15 here. Well, now it's a 17, so Jesus Christ, we've seen some high value there. Although, you know, it's plus one every time it deals damage. Our opponent didn't have Geralt, so this risk did pay off. But if they did have Geralt, it doesn't matter too much because we can... Geralt the back, right? So I think we would have won even if they did have Geralt there. Uh, so taking the risk with the priest 
they're pretty good. And you can see just how valuable these two units are together. And if you have the protector, then you're getting even more value. And if your opponent can't disrupt that, then it is a pretty powerful play. So this kind of self-harming strategy is quite interesting, but I will say it's a little bit tricky sometimes to play if you want to deal your opponent's units and you're trying to do bloodthirst things, then also playing that strategy, you know, is maybe a little bit difficult because you're playing two things at once. Uh, but if you want to go down more down this route, what you can actually do is you can change your ability to Ursign Ritual. And what that does is you damage your own units by one. But if you're using that on, say, something like a veteran, you can get it down to two points and it can boost back up. And you've got five charges. Once you've used them all, you're going to uh, spawn a five point unit. And if you're running that leader ability, then one card that is really nice to run is Vildkarl. Vildkarl is a five strength unit. This is an epic, so it costs 200 scrap to make. And when it gets down to two health, it will transform into a 12 strength unit. And because you have that leader ability, you can play Vildkarl and then you can damage it three times and instantly turn it into a 12. Then you also have a card you could make called Sigurdrifa. So we have Sigurdrifa here. And what this card does is it summons a Skellige unit from your graveyard. So you don't play it, which means if it has an ability, it doesn't trigger, right? So if you're playing this, you could resurrect that 12 strength Vildkarl. And you can also play this on the eight strength Twersec veterans. And because it summons it, this deployability doesn't happen. It doesn't damage itself. So it's just an eight point body, which is quite a nice play. And it also gets one of those onto your board. So if you did then want to start damaging it, you could. Um, the other card I do want to mention that is just generally all round good in Skelliger is Harold Houndsnout. You play Harold on a row and on the opposite row on your side, he will draw, spawn three of Harold Pals. Harold Pals are one strength units, but when they die, they deal two damage to your opponent. And every turn, provided Harold is not dead, he can damage an allied unit by one. So you can use this one damage on things like the veterans if you're trying to trigger them. Alternatively, you can use the one damage to kill Harold's pals. Uh, and another way you can kill Harold's pals is with the priest. The priest does damage to the unit by right of its right, does one, then boost by itself by two. So it could damage the skull, kill it, deal damage to your opponent, and then boost. Um, and one of the quick little combo I want to talk about here in terms of legendaries is Olaf. Olaf has eight strength, and now he has an order. And orders will trigger the turn after you play him. So if you play Olaf, you can't do this until the next turn, but what it does is you boost Olaf by twice the amount he is damaged. So if you have a priest next to Olaf, it's going to start dealing damage to him, and then on the next turn you could boost him up. And then if you also have this card here called Knut, because this is a synergy, then what Knut does, you damage an allied unit to the right by half of its current power. Then damage an enemy unit by that amount. So you would play Olaf, then on the next turn you would play Knut next to Olaf, deal four damage to Olaf, Use that four damage on your opponent, then trigger Olaf's ability to heal him by four and then boost him by four, making him a 12. And again, Olaf is a nice target for Sigurdrifa, the, re the uh, Resurrect, because it summons the unit from the your graveyard so you can pull the eight strength bear back out of your graveyard. So those are some gold cards to consider crafting if you think you're going to be a Skellige main. But that has more or less been it for my starter deck guide. If you found it helpful, you can always hit that like button. Uh, if you want to find out more about Gwent, if you're not sure, you know, what to pick in your kegs, if you need some help, there is a Discord for Team Leviathan Gaming, uh, which is a Gwent team. I'm a member of their team, for example. I stream for them. Um, and you can find that Discord in the description below. You can find me streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagras. You can find me on Twitter, at Jagras. So those are my socials if you want to find me. But beyond that, have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.